Hello and welcome to Tribe Topper. In this video, we are going to learn about IBHL Physics Topic 1.1, which is about measurements, units, and significant figures. First of all, let's learn about fundamental and derived quantities. Fundamental quantities are those for which there cannot be anything simpler than that. We cannot break them into more simpler. We don't have any formulas for them. So fundamental quantities are mass. We have length, for which we denote by L. And we have time. And apart from that, we have current, temperature, quantity of a substance and luminous intensity. I'll give you the units also for each one of them. But just to remember that these seven quantities, there are seven fundamental quantities. They are mass, length, time, current, temperature, quantity and luminous intensity. Okay, I'll write here luminous intensity. While the derived quantities are those which have, uh, which do not, uh, which are not measurable directly, we would say they are found out using the fundamental quantities by multiplication or division. For example, you have the area, which is length times breadth. You have speed, which is distance over time. So that's length over time. So you will see we have many, many derived quantities. So apart from these seven quantities, rest all are derived quantities. So their units are derived using the fundamental units. So let's have a look at this. So I'll just write down a few of the fundamental quantities and derived quantities and their standard units. So seven fundamental quantities I will write and two derived quantities. So here we have the first seven, the fundamental physical quantities, mass. What is its standard unit? SI unit is kilograms. Length, the second fundamental quantity, its SI unit is meter. Then is time, seconds, current, amperes, temperature, Kelvin. Quantity is measured in moles. Luminous intensity, candela. Velocity, meters per second and acceleration meter per second square. So you can see these are the fundamental and derived units. Another thing that we need to know because there will be a lot of conversions required. So metric multipliers. Metric multipliers means when you have something very very small or you have something very very big. So you would need these a few, uh, of a few metric multipliers like when they ask you sometimes you know there is given micrometers or fer fermi or femtometers so what are those powers so we have 10 to the power negative 15 this is a very very small unit which is femto or sometimes it is also termed as fermi right then you have 10 to the power negative 12 which is picometers so picometers, when you go to meters, you have to multiply it with 10 to the power negative 12. Similarly, nano. Nano can be used for nanometers, nano coulombs, anything. That will be 10 raised to the power minus 9. There is micro, which is 10 raised to the power minus 6. Then we have millimeters, which is 10 raised to the power minus 3. Centimeters, which is 10 to the power negative 2. And last is decimeters, which is 10 to the power negative 1. So these are for the smaller values. And for the bigger ones, most often we use our 1 is 10 to the power 3, which is a kilo. As you know, we use it for grams also. It's 10 to the power 3 kilograms. Or it is, if it is 10 to the power 3 grams, it will be 1 kilogram. And another big unit we often use it for power is 10 to the power of 6. So that has a symbol or prefix as mega. And the symbol for this is just K. Uh, it depends further what you have, meters or kilograms and so. And for mega, it's just the capital M. So these units will also be required for the conversion from smaller to bigger units or bigger to smaller units. Now let's talk about significant figures. Significant figures are basically the number of digits that are used to express a number and they carry all the information that how precisely your number is known. For example, let's say, now there are certain rules. You cannot just 
count anything and ignore anything. There are the rules to be followed. The first rule is that if you have an integer, all the digits, they are countable if that is not a zero. So for example, I have 504. So 5 and 4 will definitely be countable. They are significant figures because they are non-zero. And a zero which comes in between two non-zero digits is always significant. So the number 504 has three significant figures. Why? Because it has two non-zero digits and the zero lies between the two non-zero. So this is a significant figure. And how do we write this significant figure in the scientific notation? You've already learned that in grade 10, uh, up to grade 10 in mathematics, that how do we write a scientific notation? You put the decimal after the first digit and whatever number of digits you have after the decimal, you will make that as the power of 10. So 504 will be expressed as 5.04, that is put a decimal after the first digit and times 10 to the power of 2. Then we have 608000. How many significant figures are there? Now here, both the non-zero digits, that is 6 and 8, are of course countable. The zero which lies between 6 and 8 is also countable. But the trailing three zeros are not significant. So the zeros at the end of an integer do not count. So 608000 has only three significant figures because these three zeros will not be counted. So you just have three. And its scientific notation will be 6.08 times 10 to the power 5. Why it is 10 to the power 5? That is not based on the significant figures. The 10 to the power 5 comes from here, the number itself. So you put a decimal here and how many digits you have afterwards? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is 6.08 times 10 to the power of 5. Next number is 200. Now the rule, as I already told you, the zeros at the end of an integer do not count. So 200 has only one significant figure, that is 2. And how do you write it in scientific notation? That's 2 times 10 to the power of 2. Now let's go to 0 0.000305. Now this has three significant figures again. Why? Because if there is a decimal, and all the zeros that come after a decimal and before a non-zero number are not counted. So zeros in front do not count after a decimal. That means 0, 0.000, these are all ignorable. It's just 305, which is significant. So there are three significant figures. But if after the decimal, you have some non-zero number and there are some zeros after that, that means trailing zeros after the decimal will be counted. So if it is 0 0.005900, this has four significant figures. The first three zeros are not significant, but five, nine and double zero are significant. So this has four significant figures. And how do you write it in the decimal form? Because you have to shift your decimal from left to the right. So put it as 5.900, you have shifted by three digits to the right. So it will be 10 to the power of negative three. When you shift the decimal to the left, you always get a positive power. When you shift it to the right, you get a negative power. So this is how you count the significant figures in a given number. I hope all the rules are clear. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we shall continue with uncertainties and errors.